Well, hello there. My name is Natalie Argo. To some of you, that's Mrs. Argo. And I want to say welcome to the school garden. Now, a lot of you watching right now who watch my channel know me as a modern day homesteader. I grow food in my backyard, I cook from scratch, and I love creating things with my own two hands. But what you might not know about me is that I also help start school gardens. Since becoming a gardener, I have had the distinct honor of helping other people become gardeners as well. And one of my greatest passions is helping young gardeners get in the garden, get their hands in the soil and start growing food. And some of you watching right now are those young gardeners and I am so proud of you for starting this school garden. And today I wanna to invite you back into the garden for a school garden tour. So let's hop into it. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but as some of you guys know, this garden is located on the backside of a Catholic church. Right in between the church and the school exists this amazing garden that was built about 15 or 20 years ago. Now, when they built it, they built it in about four different sections with one smaller section in the middle. And what the students and I decided to do was basically break up those different sections for different purposes. And right here is our first section, which is the pollinator section. In our pollinator garden, we have flowers of all kinds, but we specifically planted flowers that we know would help some of the other plants we're trying to grow, like these orange and yellow marigold that we transplanted, as well as this zinnia, which some of us planted from seed. And my guess is that this zinnia is going to be a fuchsia color. It's great to see that it's already blossoming out. In this section of the garden, we also have some squash. This is zucchini, and this is a male flower. You can tell it's a male flower because it's missing, or it does not have an ovum. It's like the baby part of the fruit. What makes male flowers great is you can actually pluck them and fill them with things like cheese and herbs and spices, and you can roast these. But most of us are hoping to get squash when we plant squash plants, and the male plants help to pollinate these female plants. This right here is called an ovum, and it is the beginning of a baby fruit. In order for this to turn into a fruit, a bee has to go from a male flower to a female flower and deposit some of the pollen from the male flower into these female flowers. Pretty soon we are going to have lots of squash on our hands. We also have sweet alyssum in our garden, which is great for all kinds of pollinators, but this is definitely a favorite of the bees. There are so many opportunities to get nectar here and this shape is loved by bees and their long tongues. This here is rhizomatic grass native to San Diego and it is a weed. So if you see it, you definitely wanna pull it out. Towards the middle of our pollinator garden, we have this plant. Do you know what it is? If you do, leave a comment down below. This is a tomato plant. And to help this little tomato plant make tomatoes, you can gently tap on these flowers. And you'll move the pollen around just enough to get some fruit. So it's kind of like mimicking what the pollinators do for us. And it's a good thing we planted marigold next to our tomatoes because these are going to help deter those nasty tomato hornworms. But as you can see, the sun has scorched our marigold a little bit and it's important to prune off anything dead so that these will grow into nice big plants to scare off all of those tomato hornworms. Speaking of tomatoes, this is an early girl tomato. True to her name, she's already got some fruit on her. Now, something to know about yellow orange tomatoes is that they taste delicious so of course while i was there i did a little taste test 
Homegrown tomatoes taste a lot different than store-bought, and these little yellow orange ones are often very sweet. Let's give it a taste test. Mmm. That is a delicious tomato. Next to our early girls, we also have some other tomatoes. I didn't see a label for these, but these look more like slicers. Slicers are big tomatoes that you can slice and put on sandwiches. Now this section is what we call our berry garden because this garden is full of strawberries that were planted many years ago and it took weeks to clear out enough space to just have a decent harvest of strawberries. It took so much work to clear out those years of strawberries that had been growing there for so long, but we finally did it and this is our berry garden. Just beyond the bird netting that's protecting all of our berries, you will find some beautiful strawberry blossoms. These are some of my favorite blossoms to find in the garden because I think they're absolutely adorable. Quickly, those blossoms will turn into baby berries that look green and are very hard, just like these. But if you look a little more closely and you peel back some of the forest of strawberries, you will start to see some red strawberries. First, they start off white, and as they start to ripen, they get more and more red. And once they're a deep red like this, they're just about ready to pluck and eat and enjoy. Just past the strawberries, we have lots of pepper plants. I love the way pepper plants look too. Isn't this blossom just beautiful? This is what I think is a tom tomatillo plant believe that it is this tomatillo right here that has been planted next to some of our peppers. Now right here behind me is what we call our salad bar garden and we decided to call it our salad bar garden because obviously we planted salad mix there but also because this section gets the most shade and we know that Leafy greens tend to like as much shade and cool weather as possible, so we decided to try and plant as many leafy greens as we could in this section and see how they did. And so far, they're doing really well. This section gets the most shade, and we know that leafy greens tend to like as much shade and cool weather as possible, so we decided to try and plant as many leafy greens as we could in this section and see how they did. And so far, they're doing really well. In this bed, we have all sorts of leafy greens, but one of my favorites is chard. I love how big and bold chard gets. Even when the nasturtium pops up its head and tries to choke out some of our plants once again, the chard continues to push through with huge leaves. And to show you just how big these leaves are, I decided to pluck one of the leaves off. absolutely love chard and how colorful and beautiful it is. This is kale. And despite our best efforts, the strawberries and nasturtiums have tried to pop their heads back up. And right next to the kale is some stuff that we grew from seed. And this right here is mescaline mix. It is kind of like a spicy leafy green. And down here, we've got some new items in the garden here, and this is a cucumber. And if you look very carefully, you'll see that the seed it started from is still attached to its leaf. Last but not least, we've got our herb garden, which gets its name essentially from the fact that there is a ginormous 20 year old rosemary bush growing behind me that has taken up most of the space in this garden, but also because we wanted a space to grow herbs and it was slowly but surely we've been chipping away at this rosemary and establishing new herbs that are not only good for growing, for scent, but they also invite local pollinators and we're all really excited about that. Now this made me very happy to see this little friend in the garden because it means that our job of building an ecosystem with our milk thistle bird feeders aimed at inviting all of the local goldfinches, as well as our bird bath, aimed at inviting all the birds, well, it's starting to work and we're starting to build a little ecosystem. In our herb garden, we also have lavender 
And what I love about this lavender is that it feels very soft. If you look very closely, it looks very fuzzy and it feels like the back of a mouse's ear. It is very soft. But what's amazing about lavender is that it comes in all kinds and types and shapes and sizes. This is also lavender, but the leaves look very different. The lavender on the left is gray and fuzzy and the lavender on the right is green and not fuzzy. This plant is absolutely beautiful and I believe this is a form of salvia. You can tell by the shape of the flowers that it's something pollinators will absolutely love. Pollinators have long tongues and so anything that's shaped like a tube is something that's loved by things like bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds alike. Now, if you are a fifth grade gardener watching this video, I wanted to show you that this rosemary bush no longer has all of its beautiful purple flowers on it. They've all gone away and they've dried up. So we won't be seeing any more bees buzzing around our rosemary, but we will be finding lots of butterflies enjoying this plant. In fact, this is the only plant that monarch butterflies can eat. Do you know what it's called? This is called tropical milkweed, and it is the only plant that monarchs can eat. So very soon, we are going to see lots of monarchs visiting these plants as these little flowers start to open up. And as they visit these plants, we are going to start to see eggs on the underside of these leaves. They look like pointy little circles. And today I looked for some, but I didn't find any eggs yet. Right next to that, we've got our basil and one little pass by the basil releases lots of basil scent. Basil is an amazingly powerfully scented plant and it is absolutely beautiful to smell. And it comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes from traditional green to this dark purple. And this dark purple is absolutely beautiful, especially when you let the sun hit it. Can you see all of the different colors in these leaves? It goes from dark purple to yellow and orange, just with a little change in sunlight. And in the middle of our garden is where we're growing our tallest items, things like corn and sunflowers. Here you can see we're starting to grow some corn, which very quickly is going to get almost six feet tall. And next to it, we've also got some watermelon. And just like that, our school garden tour has come to a close. I wanna say thank you so much to everybody who has contributed to this project from the church, its congregation, and Father Min. Thank you for allowing us to use this space once again. To the school, thank you to our principal and to our teachers who have made this possible. And amazing fifth grade students, if you're watching this right now, I wanna say job well done. You guys have started an amazing garden. And of course, we can't forget our dear friend, Mr. Goff Thompson. Thank you so much for the invitation to join you in developing this school garden and raising up young gardeners. It has been an absolute privilege and a joy. This garden is looking amazing and I can't wait to share with you guys as it continues to grow. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next one. P.S. This garden would not be possible without the incredible Mr. Cassiano Mendoza. Be sure to give him a high five and thank him when you see him around campus. Thank you, Mr. Cassiano. We appreciate you so much. Your kind spirit and smile brighten our day and our garden.